This is what BMW calls its new flagship for technology. This is the BMW iX. It's completely electric. It promises up to 380 miles of range. And yes, of course, it's an SUV. And of course, being BMW in 2021, it's quite controversial looking. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to the review of this car on The Late Break Show. BMW sees this as a sort of watershed moment in this bold new future of electric vehicles, because after this will be the BMW i4, which is like a saloon, and then electrified five and seven series, which I'm not gonna deny, I'm a bit more attracted to than an SUV, but if you're a regular viewer of the Late Break Show, you kind of know that. Here's the iX. I think the side profile of this car is perhaps the second worst. I'll come on to that in a minute. The front is almost certainly the worst, but I expect if you've seen this car in pictures, you already know that. I've got to say though, it looks better in the, I was going to say metal, but in the composites than it does in pictures. It's a very smooth car. If you squint, you'd think this was the new X5, but it's actually not an X5. It's a lot more than that. That would be doing it a disservice. Size wise, I've got to talk to you about the size because people often ask me this. So. This is 15 mil longer than an X5. It's 37 mil narrower than the current X5. It's 53 mil lower, and it's 28 mil longer in wheelbase. Okay, all right. The front of the BMW iX is by far the most controversial bit. Always was since it was released. You can't hide from the appalling beaver teeth front end. It should be a grill. But it's obviously not a grill because it's electric. It doesn't need breathing space for an engine. There is no engine in there. But instead, BMW have gone with this design and it goes below the number plate, which is a bit like an overhang going below the belt line on an overweight man, I feel. This here does hold some interesting uh, design and tech though. I mean, I am offended by it, but let's just, let's just analyze it with a little bit more um, thought. In here, are all of the sensors for your adaptive cruise control, uh, your parking sensory stuff, radar, lidar, all that stuff is in here. And this, is, I believe, is a composite that's self-healing. So if this scratches and gets damaged, it, a bit of warmth and it will rejuvenate, which is great. Weird mosaic kind of design on there, which draws attention to it. I've got to say, if you ever buy this car, and I'm not saying you should yet, Make sure you order it in a dark colour like this, because in white, all you do is draw attention to the fact that it's got a hideous front end. Just like the concept car that this car was born out of, called the iNext, which was seen at Paris Motor Show in 2018, it's got these strange wheel arch shapes. Can you see it? Which I actually like. It's got a conventional aperture there, but this... Yeah, this is like an interesting crease. And I think that's probably my favorite part of this. Yes, it's all very smooth, but it's a big old block, isn't it? This part here is a little bit dull. I'm not gonna deny that. And then you look at these indented door handles. They are not conventional whatsoever. You put your hand in and you just, and there's a touch sensitive solenoid and it pops out. Talking of which, when I open the door, look, frameless doors, a feature you normally see on pillarless coupes and convertibles and stuff like that, not on a big SUV. And an SUV at that, which is extremely heavy, despite the fact that it's almost all... It does this, it's an intelligent car, the iX, hang on. Because it uses its eighth generation of iDrive, so it's constantly communicating with you and giving you as much information as possible. And you can either talk to it using your voice or gesture using gestures. Both of those things in cars, I can't stand and I never use. Look, the sexy bits almost in the door apertures, just like the BMW i3, the baby in the range, it's got big, chunky, open weave carbon fiber. A lot of people, a lot of people are saying this is a ground up electric car. It's almost completely true. 
but it does use elements of the CLAR platform, which the BMW iX is an adaptation of. So the suspension, the double wishbone front end, the multi-link rear, um, which are made of mostly aluminium, they're shared. And the drivetrain, the motors at the front and back, because it's four wheel drive, X, X drive, and the batteries are shared with the X, iX3 as well. Door handles, I think, that dirt will just go in there. I mean, it is aero. This car is 0.25 coefficient, which is actually, I think, class leading for this genre of car. They've all got aero wheels. I think they start on 20s. This is the 50 model, the X-Drive 50, which is currently the top of the range. The iX40 has a smaller battery pack than the 50. This is 105 kilowatt hours battery pack. That's a big, big, big old battery pack, don't you think? Whereas the other one gets 71 kilowatt hours. So the, the, the X Drive 50 gets uh, 257 miles WLTP. This, with its 105.2 kilowatt hour battery pack, up to 380 miles WLTP, which is a massive range. Massive. But it needs to be because it's massive and it's sort of aerodynamic considering what it is. Yeah, so you can get 20s, 21s and 22 inch wheels. And because this is currently the flagship car, this particular test car is costing over a hundred grand. Although iX prices start at 70,000. Yeah, this is on the 22s. And actually I'm really surprised that this is on the 22s because it doesn't ride like it's on this sort of size of wheel. But we're in this world now where that doesn't look like a big wheel, does it? From there, it doesn't look that big. Bonnet. You can't open it. You'll never know what's in there unless you go to a BMW dealer because there is no bonnet release, you can't open it. But what is in there is a uh, front motor because this is X-Drive four wheel drive. So all the iX cars have two motors and the motors are the same permanently excited um, synchronous motors that you get on the iX3. Um, so the drivetrain is familiar, but it's just been wound up for extra power in this particular version. That BMW badge there, that's the only thing you can open. Think of it as a small bonnet within the bonnet, and that's to put your screen wash in. This sort of reminds me of the Audi A2. Do you remember the Audi A2? Genius car, ahead of its time, all aluminium, a little bit too expensive for people to understand. That had a grill that you couldn't access. It had a bonnet you couldn't access, and it just had little flaps for checking certain things like the screen wash, and I like that. These lights, these lights are incredible at night. They're called the BMW laser lights. It's the next generation version of the laser light. They're slim, it's like the back lights. They work brilliantly. And I do like the fact that they sit there quite flush with the bonnet. Um, by Jove, they're advanced. And I should think they're damn expensive if you, um, if you damage one. This, these sort of weird chevrons are part of the BMW M Sport pack for this car. You can option it with aerodynamic ones, which aren't actually any more aerodynamic. They're just part of a, an aerodynamic pack. Um, but yeah, the front end is... It just looks awful. I'm sorry, but BMW do some very cool things um, in isolation. I'm going to use this term isolation. When you look at certain designs of the iX in isolation, it's fantastic and it's incredible. When you stand back and look at it as a package, it's just, it's, it's got an Instagram filter, which makes you think that something's more attractive than it really is. You know what I mean? It's almost like this car was made for the Instagram generation. First things first, this curved, sort of hanging, floating screen. It's amazing in one sense, it's great for passengers and stuff. Um, and there's so many options that you can just scroll through. For example, and I'll come onto this as I'm just gonna navigate past this car. The climate control. The climate control is permanently available at the bottom there, can you see? So if I press that, it'll bring it up. I mean, look at this. This is all the left-hand side, the passenger seat, all of that. On the right, this is all of me. I've got my heated seat on high. There's three modes of heated seat. There's heated armrest here, elbow rest, whatever you want to call it. That's heated, 
three settings again, three settings of steering wheel. And I'm telling you this because it's extremely cold today. It's, it's zero degrees um, with a wind chill. So challenging conditions. Um, I unplugged the car uh, at 99% this morning. Um, and it was, I think, 275 miles, but I'll put a picture of it on screen to prove that. But here, where my wrist is, this is where those little crystal dial, the, the cut glass dial, really um, allows you to kind of twist through what, what is the eighth generation of BMW iDrive system. So this car hosts this all new operating system. Uh, and I do love the fact there are physical or kind of touch sensitive buttons all around this crystal dial which uh, are in the etched wood, which I do like, I do like that I have to say. As I go into these corners, okay, where this paddle is for your drive control, which again is cut glass, if I knock it back into B mode, B mode is one pedal driving and it's aggressive. You can see from a regen mode there. It's really aggressive, just like it is on the BMW i3s I remember driving. And I like it, but I'm a sort of seasoned EV driver. If you're not a regular EV driver, you'll probably find it a bit too aggressive. But it's the best way, look, and it will bring you to a complete stop if you wanted to. It will do hill starts and things like that, which I do quite like. Come round to the rear of the iX. This is actually its most flattering angle. I really like these narrow lights. In fact, the front lights are narrow as well. There's these sort of, and they match the door handles actually. Um, but they, you can't see it on camera perhaps, but these are indented. I thought they were flush in pictures, but they're not. They're indented. And just like I think the Land Rover Defender, the new Defender that I reviewed, because they're tunneled in and they're at the back where all the dirt goes, I cleaned this car about 15 minutes ago thankless task i think all the dirt and the dust will get and sit in there just like the door handles so i think that's probably not a particularly practical idea but part of that for now there's your camera really really carefully concealed in the beamer badge blue surround because it's an i series and it's eco x drive because it's four wheel drive two motors um, and 50 because it's i don't know BMW badging is just all over the shop, isn't it, these days? The same with Mercs. It's just got too confusing. Basically, it's, it's the bigger battery and the bigger performance than the 40. Down there is a diffuser either side where, I guess, on an X5, there will be some shotgun tailpipes. But because this is a flat floor, fully co EV car, it doesn't need any of that. Boot. Oh, a bit of a spoiler. I like these ridges, actually. I do like these ridges, which continue on the roof bars. Boot power of course and because the tail lights are integrated into the boot you have to have these because it's mandatory in case you have to lift up the boot with the side of the road or whatever and you can see again the carbon fiber so now it goes from being a really wide car to not a very wide car you see you've lost this immediately in the boot aperture so although that's a bit of a shame you've got a nice flat entry point for the boot it's a good Flat, good shape i do like it and there's a deep well in there which i've put all of the charging leads all the necessary bits and bobs so that bit is good one touch drop of the seats here we go you can drop the seats electrically which is kind of cool there's a bit of a convoluted hard parcel shelf situation going on which I'm not sure people will like, especially if you've got dogs, you'll probably remove that and immediately put it in the garage and there's nowhere to conceal it. But here's the thing, that's 500 litres of boot space, okay? Which is actually for the size of the car, not very big. It's smaller than most of its competitors like the Mercedes EQC and the Jaguar I-Pace. Not only that, and this is the bit that really pees me off, is you buy a car like this because you want, allegedly, you want space. This is smaller than the 5 Series BMW Saloon Boot and the 5 Series Estate, which begs the question, why are you buying a car this shape? Why are we buying cars this shape? I don't understand. Now the iX really is all about, according to BMW, this emphasis on a refinement and relaxed driving. It's a flagship of the i series, which is why it doesn't have a number. It's just iX, and the X meaning it's sort of off-roady, uh, like the X Drive. 
uh, which is four wheel drive. Yes, it is four wheel drive. It's got two motors, uh, one on each axle. Uh, the combined power is 523 horsepower for this model, which is the, the upper end model. There will be an M Sport version, you know, uh, which has 600 and something horsepower. But at the moment, there's two models, the 40 and the 50, and this is the 50, which is 4.6 seconds to 62. Even when you're in efficient mode. On the roads. Now, it has been very cold this right. morning, so I imagine. That brings me on to one thing. It's got loads of stuff like gesture control and voice control. I'm not interested, okay? Every time I gesticulate when I'm talking to my daughter on the way to school or to you, to the camera, it keeps interpreting that as a command. I'm not interested. Don't want gesture control. Just want really tactile things I can do with my thumbs or my fingertips, all right? I'm sorry, I, I don't need to do this to do the volume. I don't need to do that. I'm not interested. It's unnecessary evolution. Anyway, ride. The ride of the X3, consider what this car weighs, which is two and a half tons on the, uh, the, big, the big battery version. The ride's incredible. The refinement's incredible. You don't really get an idea of its weight um, thanks to this sort of adaptive air suspension, uh, double wishbone front, multi-link rear suspension, which is aluminium. You don't get that feeling of, of weight until you start to corner quite hard or you corner late and it's a bit slippery. And because of the torque vectoring that this car has, you can go all rear wheel drive and it will just kind of throw the power front and rear willy-nilly. There's a boat. We're nowhere near the sea. So here's the iX's ch massive charging flap. One thing I've noticed with this, and I do like the little individual uh, hinge doors because they're just neat. There's less to um, get trapped or fall off. This light here is not very helpful because it's shining right at you. So at night when I went to plug it in last night, I couldn't really see where the Type 2 connector was. I just saw this light shining at me. So that's not massively helpful, even though that is a status light, I think. But there is no like little overhead light, which is what I would like. Small problem, but you know, a car that's full of interesting details, that's probably a point missed. What hasn't been missed is its rapid charge ability. CCS, DC 200 kilowatts. That's a really high amount of charge. So that'll do, I think, 90 miles in 10 minutes. So 90 miles of, 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 of range in, in 10 minutes at 200 kilowatts. That's amazing. About half an hour, 10 to 80% of charge. But if you're charging it at your normal wall box, which is seven kilowatts, which is what I've been doing, that'll take you 14 hours. Although all IXs come with onboard 11 kilowatt um, AC charging ability. Remember, that's this car with the bigger battery. So 254 horsepower at the front, 309 brake horsepower at the rear, and those combined to, I think, 516 bhp or 523 uh, PS. So this thing is quick really quick actually even in efficient mode the throttle's punchy uh, I like the steering actually um, BMW are pretty good at things like the steering feel it's always a challenge with a car like this the weight that it is the fact that you sit up and the, the dash is quite low you do feel like you're in a commanding driving position although I drove it yesterday for about an hour and I couldn't get the seat comfortable despite the fact you've got loads of adjustment in these jingle jangle cut glass uh, door adjustment, electric adjustments, uh, which are mimicking Mercedes-Benz, certainly having them on the door, which I don't particularly like. Um, I can't, couldn't get this seat comfortable, and then I realized why. It's because in the spec of this particular example, this test car, somebody's delete optioned the lumbar support um, and the side adjustment on the seat, and this is a sport seat, which is again an option. And I just don't find it that comfortable. It looks great, but I don't find it very comfortable, which is a shame, really.
Inside the iX, well, it's all about the cabin, I think, this car. It's all about this. And it's really impressive, I have to say. Again, I'm going to use that word isolation. In isolation, I think some of the pieces of tech and um, the design is awesome. But I'm going to start here with this, the thing that the driver holds on to. Look at the shape of this steering wheel. It's a hexagon. In fact, a lot of steering wheels, and I'm not just pointing the finger at BMW, a lot of steering wheels now are a bit mad in shape. We've had flat bottoms for ages with Audi S lines and stuff, but this is mad. I'm going to reach behind me for a prop. This is a steering wheel from an Austin Allegro first generation, a Quartic wheel. This has been the butt of jokes for 45 years or so. I really like this steering wheel. I always thought it was charming, if a little flawed. People took the piss out of this so much. Is it really that bad compared to stuff like this? I mean, <laughs> I'll give it to BMW. It's not too fat like the M Sport ones are. And you have got these thumb wheels here and it's two spoke. I do like a two spoke wheel, um, but yeah, unnecessary just for the point of design but let's look at the other stuff you've got brushed I think rose gold satin rose gold you've got matte finish wood which has been etched with um, controls and these are actual these are buttons haptic feedback buttons for this screen you've got this mad screen which goes I don't know th two thirds of the dash and it actually curves in favor of the driver it's a bit like those TVs that were slightly curved that lots of techno perverts bought and then realised they possibly weren't any better than a flat screen. This is a great screen though. You can kind of personalise it and go through all the tiles just like you can with a phone. Uh, this is the eighth generation of BMW iDrive. So although there's loads of touchscreen, you've got a couple of the main controls here and this crystal glass thumb wheel here. This is a flat floor car. Because this is a carbon fibre cage design, similar to the i3, it allows you to have flat floor space here in between the, the driver and the passenger and flat floor and lots of space back there. But BMW's chosen to go on quite chunky with the centre console, which I think is a shame in a way. Although it is, it is tasteful, you could have made even more leg room by kind of bringing this back. You can't adjust this. There's a little bit of a kind of a hole, a rubberized hole here where I think you can stick a phone. There's wireless charging down there, two cup holders, two USB-Cs, and there's a couple of USB-Cs here because it's for zone climate. And then in here, a really deep binnacle, which I've put biscuits, gloves, walkie-talkie, all the things we don't show on display on the Late Break Show, down there. I have to say though, tons of headroom. You've got this panoramic glass roof, which is actually uh, electrically opaque. It has an electric charge put through it so you can make it clear or frosted at the touch of a button, which I first saw on the Rolls-Royce Phantom, a BMW product. And it's now finally trickled down to a cheaper car than a roller. So you've got a lot of touchscreen going on here. I mean, huge amount of detail. That's just, you've always got the climate menu at the bottom. And this is, I mean, look at how detailed this is. This is just climate control. This is for the passenger side. This is for the driver's side. I mean, incredible. Three stages of heated seat, three stages of heated armrests, and they are warm. Yeah, they are, amazing. And three stages of heated steering wheel. So on a day like today, this is all welcomed material. If you don't want that, you have got a couple of buttons all around the edge of your crystal dial. And like I said, this is the latest generation of iDrive software. Um, an iDrive we've been living with now for what? Um, 15 years, something like that. Um, so you can customize all your tiles like a phone if you really want to. It is quite bewildering. I haven't got the time to go through it in, in immense detail, but all I'll say is there's a lot going on here. So there's lots to like in the cabin, and this is really where I think BMW have thrown the most of their effort. Um, I prefer the i3 cockpit. If they were to have scaled up the i3 cockpit, I wouldn't have a problem with it. And I don't think it would look old at all. But this is a more luxurious car, and this is the world of SUV. Anyway, in the back, five-seater. The first thing that really annoys me about the cabin of the iX is the lack 
of a third row of seats. There's no option for a seven-seater in a car of this size, which I think is a bit disappointing. Most of the batteries live under that centre console and under where I'm sat now. So this, this floor is a little bit higher than it would be in, say, an X5. But I'm still really comfortable. I've still got loads of leg room. These seats are quite dug out at the back for extra knee space, elasticated pockets, and two USB-C ports built into the back of each seat. Now, we did see USBs being built into seats on the Land Rover Defender, which I thought was a genius idea. This also has a little, um, what is it, a bracket so that you can clip in an iPad, a holder, and also a coat hanger, both of which look a bit flimsy if I'm honest but I also like the fact that these sports seats have got they haven't got a separate headrest but they've got a hole through so when I'm sitting in the back here I do get a bit of sunlight and stuff through here and they're very very slim on the head section which might not be so good in a crash but they're really good for people sitting at the back wanting to see through to the front um, as a, having a daughter who suffers from travel sickness frequently these are the sort of things I look at for a family car the centre console is sort of semi-floating. There's loads of space under it, which bodes really well for the person that sat in the middle. And also, the person that sat in the middle doesn't have a sculpted bucket seat. It is quite a flat thing with this sort of diamond stitching, uh, which we've seen in numerous places before. Flat armrest. Two cup holders here that aren't dug out of here. They're in there, which is quite cool. And also, I'm going to have to manoeuvre my back door around because down here, to access the look, to access the Isofix for kid seats, you pull this little kind of blind, and I think that's quite neat. Rather than having them either on display or dug so deep that you can't ever access the kid seats, and normally you're accessing the Isofix when you're sleep deprived and annoyed, and in a rush. All of the the things that you touch, all the tactile surfaces are really pleasant actually. Again, solenoid release for the doors like at the front. And I have to say it's an option on this car, but the Bowers and Wilkins sound system is absolutely killer. Bloody love it, it's incredible. As the light goes down, it's worth ending this video by saying that BMW intend the iX to convey this new form, this new era of relaxed driving experience. And that is what it is. It's fulfilled that brief. It's incredibly refined and relaxing to drive. In fact, it belies its componentry, really. A two and a half ton car, it weighs nearly half a ton more than an X5. And it can drive so well and it's so quiet and it's so special inside. And on the other hand, it's almost like the engineering department has just built this car for Instagrammers and YouTubers because there's so many elements of this car that's fascinating and incredible. But when you put them all together, it sort of jars with me a bit. And I can't help thinking if you built a ground up car like this, why did you put a conventional bonnet on it that you can't even put luggage in? Why is it this shape? It can't even be bought as a seven-seater. The boot's smaller than a five-series saloon. But yet, all that engineering has gone into it. Carbon fibre, incredible renewable energy. So, I can't help thinking that in isolation, we've heard a lot of that word recently, in isolation, there is so, so much to like. There is so much to like about the iX but I can't love it. I just can't. Thanks for watching this review on The Late Break Show. These brand new launch episodes are proudly supported by Continental Tires. What do you think of the iX? Would you rather have this, the Audi e-tron, the Jaguar I-Pace, the Mercedes EQC, or the Tesla Model X? Let me know in the comments.